Greetings, everyone. Uh, my name is Brady Witten, and it's a privilege to welcome you to worship here at First United Methodist Church in Baton Rouge. I welcome those of you who are joining us at home, uh, podcast, television, radio, however you're joining us, and I, of course, welcome those of you who are here in person as well. So today we are going to remember Jesus' baptism, and we're going to have the opportunity to renew our baptismal vows as well as we celebrate a baptism and the confirmation of 27 of our young people. Uh, we also have a a very special guest preacher with us today, the Bishop of the Louisiana Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church, Bishop Dolores Williamston, and I know you will be blessed yeah, to have her. <laughs> so, the, the Bishop is sitting, do you all know we have a Bishop's chair? It's the tallest chair here, but it puts her behind everything and she can't see anything, but she is in the Bishop's chair, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I have to do something because we've, we've been a little embarrassed at the last couple of services. There's a greeting that Christians often give where we say, uh, how do we start in Bishop? <laughs> God is good, and you all say? All the time. And then I say, all the time, and you all say? Okay, so the bishop's going to have you all do that. Say it like you mean it the first time. She's had, she's had to like work with us. It's been a little, you know, so uh, you, you all want to try it again? God is good. And all the time. Okay, I warmed him up for you, Bishop. There you go. Will you stand and join me in the call to worship, please? Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of God's name. The voice of the Lord is upon the water. The voice of the Lord is powerful. Let us praise the name of the Lord. Today's reading is taken from the Gospel of Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the whole Judean region and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the strap of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, You are my Son, my Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. God is good? All the time. And all the time? God is good. Amen, amen, amen. Greetings to the members and friends of First United Methodist Church here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. What a blessing and an honor it is to be with you this morning, and I want to thank uh, Pastor Reverend Brady Witten for this wonderful invitation to come and share. It means a lot to me, and it is so humbling to be here with you all. I also want to say thank you to First United Methodist Church for your longtime ministry in downtown Baton Rouge since 1834. 
for y'all. That's a long time, amen. And I'm sure there's been many baptisms, confirmation classes, as well as weddings and celebrations of life and Bible studies and Sunday schools and professions of faith and testimonials that have happened here in this location. And as we say where I come from, from Kansas, by the way, Keep on keeping on. So keep on doing what you're doing. I know that God is with us and God is with you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we can keep on doing this together as the Louisiana Conference of the United Methodist Church as we move forward with hope to build, connect, and equip disciples for the future. Amen? Amen. Now I invite you to listen in to these words once again from Mark chapter 1, I'll read verse 9 through 11. So hear these words. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, you are my son, the beloved with you, I am well pleased. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you praise and thanks for this day. Lord, open our hearts and our minds and our ears, O oh God, to hear from you. And Lord, may the words of my mouth and meditation upon my heart be acceptable to you. For you, O oh God, are our rock and our redeemer in all times and in all places. Amen. You know, I, I must share with you all three baptismal stories today. First, I, I must tell you a story about a viral video that happened in 2016 of a little boy named Jordan who was so excited to get baptized after giving his life to Jesus that he baptized himself. The video records the pastor and the boy standing in about a three and a half foot deep uh, baptismal po pool. The pastor is standing behind the boy with one hand on his shoulder and one hand held up high in the air. And uh, the pastor, with this great baritone voice, introduces Jordan and that Jordan has been waiting for a long time for this day. The pastor says Jordan has professed his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jordan, now I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy. But Jordan, impatient, did not wait for the pastor to finish his words or finish the sentence. And as soon as he heard the word son, he, he says, I'll do it. And he grabs his nose and he slams himself under the water. He jumps up with his hands up high and says, I'm baptized like he won the victory. Amen. And then he exits the pool immediately. And then you can hear his dad's voice on the video saying, you go, Jordan. <laughs> now, don't look that up right now. We got to get through this rest of the sermon, okay? But you can look it up later. Now, I, I don't know where that little boy Jordan is today, but his baptism speaks volumes of his joy that day. As I watched Jordan's baptismal experience, or baptism experience, I found that it shares some commonalities with the second baptism story. When Jesus is baptized by John the baptizer, which is actually his cousin, immediately Jesus comes up out of the water of the river Jordan. And he sees the heavens torn open and, and the Holy Spirit descends like a dove upon him. And then he hears a voice from heaven that says, this is my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And it's Jesus' baptism that launches him towards the cross. You see, after Jesus comes up out of the water, he begins selecting his disciples. And after his baptism, he puts his life in danger as he announces his call to ministry in his own hometown where hometown prophets are, are not accepted anywhere. And he reads from the scroll of the book of Isaiah or, or chapter 61 in our Bibles. He's, it says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight 
for the blind and to set free those who have been oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he announces that he has fulfilled the scripture in their hearing. And then he is rejected and must immediately leave town as they plan to throw him off a cliff, but he escapes. Though rejected, Jesus continues to move forward after his baptism, and he heals the sick, and he raises the dead, and he gives sight to the blind. He feeds a multitude of hungry people. He preached to the oppressed. He spoke with the woman at the well, which was taboo. And he healed the woman with an issue of blood. And he healed the ten who had leprosy. He made them clean. All this after he immediately come up out of the waters of his baptism. We witness in the scriptures that Jesus' life is lived out with great intention to offer salvation to all who will believe. The Gospel of John says it. It says that he came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural or of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. Helping us to understand what it means, that it means that we must be born again. As Jesus said in John 3, you must be born again, born of water and the Spirit. You see, I believe that this action of baptism gives all who believe new hope and new life. To be born again of the Spirit through entering in and coming out of the waters of new life. Which brings us to the third story of baptism. We cannot leave this out today. That is our own story of baptism. I want you to just take a, a second to think about that and reflect on your own baptism. Yes, I believe that many may not remember their baptism. Maybe you were baptized as an infant or as a very young child, which is understandable. But you grew up affirming and confirming your faith in Jesus Christ like today. You have Yet another opportunity, too, to remember your baptism and be thankful. For we as United Methodists, we, we do not uh, rebaptize a person, Pastor, do we? But we believe that baptism is from within. Baptism's from within. Yes, water serves in baptism as the outward sign of an inward grace. And, and we will, all you got to do is ask the pastor, we will sprinkle, we will pour, and we'll dunk you, by golly, if you want dunked. But baptism is about what's going on the, on, on the inside of our hearts and souls. When we put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ as our Savior, as Scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if any man, any woman, any child, any teenager is in Christ, there is a new creation Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That is, we are no longer the same before, after we have been baptized. When we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, we become those new creations through the Son, Jesus, who reconciles us back to God. For it is through the Son, Jesus, that God is well pleased. You see, coming up out of the water represents we are a new creation, and we are being transformed in our minds as we come out of the waters from living one way, our way, to living God's way, which is a new way in all that we do. Scripture says it, be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds. You see, every day we, we have to remember to, to renew our minds as we come up out of the waters. We, we have to come up out of the waters and, and remember that there should be joy in our feet and 
hope in our hands. We come up out of the waters with love in our hearts, and we can come up out of the waters with peace in our minds and faith in our actions and self-control in our dealings. We can come up out of the water holding on to all the fruits of the Spirit, not just a few, but all the fruits of the Spirit. We can practice kindness and goodness and gentleness and faithfulness from the heart. Can I get an amen? Amen. We can come up out of the water with grace, remembering that it is by grace you have been saved, not by yourself or of of yourself, so that you or no one can boast that they've saved anyone. We can come up out of the waters as United Methodists committed to doing no harm, doing all the good we can, and staying in love with God. As we continue to pray and attend Bible study and come to communion and and remember our baptisms and, and all those wonderful things on a daily basis. We can come up out of the waters and offer hope in a world that is looking for hope. We can inspire the world and, and because people are looking for something to believe in or someone to believe in. And we have Jesus Christ, amen, coming out of the water and he brings hope. So up from the waters comes salvation and deliverance from sin. Up out of the waters comes a new creation. Up out of the waters comes new life and new understanding and new acceptance of God's love. And I'm here to tell you something today. I hope, I hope, amen, right? I'm here to tell you that we have the one Jesus who gave his life so that we can live and that we can have life abundantly. Amen. I'm so glad I came to church today, Pastor. Amen. I got to remind myself sometimes. Amen. You see, Jesus comes up out of the waters and he calls us today. He calls us to come out of the darkness, amen, and to walk in his marvelous light as his disciples. And he calls us to remember your baptism. Remember and be thankful. You know, as we become new creations through the water and the word or the washing of the word of God. Today, we will have an opportunity to renew our baptismal vows, and it's a yearly ritual in most liturgical churches. Symbolically, we, we come to touch the waters or make the sign of the cross on our forehead on, or on the back of our hand, and we have to remember that whenever we do that, that these waters have been in existence since the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, and when Jesus went into the Jordan. To remind us, we do this of our baptism. Or, or we can do as one senior pastor that uh, I worked with, I was his associate, Reverend Ted Inman in Topeka, Kansas. He said to me in the congregation years ago as we were planning a renewal of your baptismal vow service, he told us all, he says, all you got to remember, all you got to do to remember your baptism is to go take a shower. It serves as a daily reminder, you know, if you take a daily shower or whatever. <laughs> it serves as a daily reminder of your baptism, you get me. For, for you come out refreshed and renewed, he said. And, and you come out again reminded over and over and over of your baptism. So you don't need to wait for the first Sunday of every new year to remember your baptism. No, he said, just go take a shower or a bath and remember your baptism. I believe Pastor Ted Inman is right. I believe that. And so maybe in our daily rememberings as we come up out of the waters of our shower or our our bath, we can remember our baptism on a daily basis. And we can keep the words of an old African-American spiritual on our heart as we wash away the days, uh, uh, wash away whatever we're washing away when we're under the water. The words of that spiritual go like this as we pray or as we are in the shower, remembering, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. I want to be more loving. I want to be more holy. And I want to be like Jesus in my heart as I come up out of the waters today, as I come up out of the waters to remember my baptism. Today is about us remembering our baptism. 
and coming up out of the waters into a transformed life. Through the Son, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you praise and honor. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as a ransom for many. And when he came up out of the waters, he set the course for what we are called to do and who we are called to be. So help us, God, in this time, as we remember this year in 2024, as we remember our baptisms and are thankful. In Jesus' name I pray, let us all say, amen. <laughs>